Hello everyone and welcome to the Gunpla Network. I'm the Spicer and today's unboxing of Kotobakiya's Cross Frame Girl Dark Magician Girl comes to you courtesy of those fine folks over at Canadian Gundam. Canadian Gundam is your one-stop shop for all things Gunpla and Plamo here in North America. With flat rate shipping to the US and Canada, a private warehouse option, and a vast catalog that's restocked regularly, they're going to have everything you're looking for. When you're checking out that vast catalog and placing your next order, potentially for a kit like this, don't forget to use the promo code GUMPLA NETWORK to save yourself 10% off. So just as I've done in all of my previous unboxings for like the last 6 months or a year or so at this point, I'll show you everything that's in the box but I'm not going to directly talk about it, I'm talking more about my perceptions going in. And this is a kit I was a little... I don't want to say skeptical of necessarily, but I just don't have a ton of experience with these. I built the Wonder Waifu back in the day, but that's the only one I've built since. So I don't have a ton of experience with these, but I'm actually kind of excited. I think this could look really good. There are a few things I picked out that I was like, eh, that might be a little concerning, but it wouldn't be like a deal breaker by any means. And one of them is the... one of the things I complimented on the Wonder Waifu, oddly enough, is the plastic, I think, has a better visual representation for the Wonder Waifu because we've never really seen it. It's not from a thing, right? It's a design, but it's not a design from, like, a show or a trading card game like the Dark Magician Girl is. So you have a little bit more liberty with it. And when you look at the side of the box, the box art, whatever it is. And you look at the like painted version of the kit and then the unpainted version, one of the things that stands out pretty significantly is the blue really comes off plasticky, right? Now, a simple like matte top coat fixes this pretty easily, but this plastic, the, the plastic the Kota Bakia uses doesn't play as well to be like a fabric, right? It plays much better towards kind of looking almost like more of a metal. And of course, it all still looks plastic, but you, you get the idea of what I'm trying to convey here. Now, that being said, that's not really a deal breaker for me. The only other real big concern I had was the cape on the back of like the shoulder pad top thingy. Those, I don't know if they're articulated. All of the pictures from the sides of the box... They all, it, it's all swooped out. And I think that's just its permanent situation, right? That is going to make regular static poses a little bit more difficult, but they do a good job of showing you poses that are like, hey, this pose here is, you know, she's flying or she's doing some kind of dynamic action. So you can still have options, just it would have been nice if that's something that could just lay flat. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say I wish Kota Bikia would have included, like, a soft goods wire-laden cape, but, you know, it would have been kind of nice. And it would have played really well with the top coat of the blue, which would make it look more like fabric. Now, all of those kind of apprehensions out of the way, I think this is going to be super cool. <laughs> like, this would be really interesting to pair with any of the uh, Bandai... Yu-Gi-Oh kits. I, I think they've got the blue eyes. I think they've got the big guy. I can't remember the name of off the top of my head now. Um, and I wouldn't. Um, and I, I think the lackluster soldier. I think is the next big one up. Um, but if they ever do a dark magician, that would be really cool. You have different options as far as like a Yugi Ami. Um, statue so you, you could definitely have like a actual dedicated Yu-Gi-Oh shelf if you wanted to um and i know they make statues of like all the, the card characters too but yeah this is just something i find really interesting uh it's gonna be different for like most of my shelf obviously you guys have seen it pretty recently it's mostly gundams and kind of just other niche <laughs> interests i have but it is like yeah it's just gonna stand out because i don't really have anything else like it even with the Wonder Waifu kind of withstanding. Now, in terms of some of the other, 
I guess kind of the benefits or the cool things I saw when I was going through the box. You do have some cool stands in there. That's neat. You have the little spell book. Um, you have the multiple face plates. That's pretty cool. I am worried the little face plate thing might be a little bit of a pain to change out just because of how this is designed as far as like the head sculpt with the hat and hair and whatnot. But we'll see once I actually get to building it. But yeah, it's just like those little details like that. Like, would it be really crazy cool if it would have come with a like Dark Magician card or a Dark Magician Girl card? 100%. Is it a deal breaker? Absolutely not. It's just kind of a missed opportunity. But yeah, I mean, overall, if you have one of those in, you know, this is something that interests you, they go together really well. If you have other Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, obviously, this is going to play well with that in your shelf, probably. Uh, we'll see more once, like I said, I get it built. But yeah, I'm actually pretty excited for this. So if you've built this, let me know in the comments down below. Did you like it? What didn't you like? Uh, if you haven't built it and you have questions, same deal. Put them down there. We'll do our best to answer any questions you have. But anyway, thanks for sticking with me, guys. I do truly appreciate it. And as always, I've been The Spicer here for the Gunpla Network. Do your best to stay safe and keep on building.